Hey guys, Level Cap here, and honestly, I never expected to make a video like this about Minecraft, but here we are. Microsoft and Nvidia have released a beta version of Minecraft that features real time ray tracing. And while RTX does totally transform the look of Minecraft, it also enables some incredibly exciting things that I doubt anyone thought could be achieved in a real time 3D environment. To get into the beta, you need an NVIDIA RTX capable GPU and the Xbox Insider app. Once you have the app installed, just opt into the beta and install Minecraft from the Windows Store. You'll need to own the Windows 10 version. Once you install it, you can set up your own RTX world or just download one in game. For now, I would recommend messing around in the pre-made worlds as getting your own worlds working requires some manual loading of textures. In this video, I downloaded the world Digital Foundry provided with their video covering the beta. It was designed to showcase several RTX features that makes incredible use of ray tracing's ability to physically simulate real world lighting. So first things first, just toggling RTX on and off should show you how dramatic a difference it makes. Now there are of course shader mods like Sonic Ether's unbelievable shaders that give a similar effect, but RTX is leaps and bounds more advanced. And rather than being a manually generated approximation of how light behaves, RTX turns light sources into actual light sources. These lights cast rays that are calculated in real time and in Minecraft, they can bounce about seven or eight different times off of objects. Obviously light in real life can bounce a seemingly infinite number of times. So eight bounces might not sound like a lot, but it's plenty to generate convincing looking lighting and even enable some pretty wild things. The doorway here into the digital foundry example house shows how the light fades with each bounce until it goes pitch black. Stepping into the first room showcases an emissive texture that's made specifically for Minecraft RTX that acts as a light source. You can see the light passing through and bouncing off the colored glass and cubes in the room to add a subtle color contrast to the shadows. The next room shows how regular blocks create shadows with just a single block open in the ceiling to allow sunlight in. Because this is all real time lighting, you can destroy or modify the blocks to realistically alter the shadows and lighting in the room. Opening up the hole or adding colored glass to it has a dramatic impact on the light in the room. The next room is where things really start to get interesting. The walls reflect the light bouncing off the tree and its surroundings to create these soft reflections that look like mirror images of the scene. The next room shows how colored blocks can create colored bounce lighting and even make new colors by mixing the bounce lighting from two blocks. This corner has a red and blue patch, but with RTX enabled, the blue patch turns purple because of how light bounces off the red one. The hallway leading to the next room shows how glass not only distorts the world seen through it, but also affects the brightness value of light passing through it. The space at the bottom of this glass wall allows slightly more light through, which translates to a brighter reflection on the floor. Adding a colored glass block again shows how the light changes color and brightness based on what is going through it. This waterfall area demonstrates how light travels through water to create a shimmering light pattern that you might see on, say, the ocean floor. Going down the waterfall also shows how it gradually reduces the light level. The next room showcases how multiple glass blocks can stack to boost the saturation of the color they cast and even mix to cast new colors. The emissive texture hallway has a full colored rainbow effect as lights blend together, creating a smooth gradient. At the end of the hall, there's a mirror room that gives the infinity mirror effect, though the number of reflections is actually capped to just a few for performance reasons. Beyond that is a wall showing how the emissive textures can be multicolored light sources. People could use these to create highly detailed illusions or even moving images with the right programming of redstone circuits. And this final set of rooms really does show off what makes ray tracing so incredible. Until now, we've seen things that I'm sure you may have seen some version of in maybe a game or a simulation before. Light bouncing around in a realistic way to light a scene. 
colored light sources, glass distortion, etc. That's been done either with RTX or manually by developers at some point. But there's never been a game that actually simulates a true lens effect. In the final set of rooms, Digital Foundry have created a camera obscura by placing emissive textures in the shape of their logo on a wall. As you can see, it's mirrored and reflects in reverse, but where things get really interesting is when you go to the adjacent room. Here, you'll see that DF logo on the wall as well. But this version of it is created purely by the lights in the other room. A single block hole in the wall lets light from the first room in, turning the second room into a camera obscura. Camera obscura is a real world camera made by placing a small hole in a room to let light through. Provided that the hole is the only thing letting light in, you'll get a projection of the outside world on the wall opposite the hole. This camera technique has been used since as far back as 1604 as a parlor trick or means of tracing the real world onto paper or canvas, and of course for studying the effects of light and wavelengths. It eventually led to the invention of photography and the modern day camera. In a nutshell, Minecraft RTX simulates real world lighting so well that we can utilize the actual lighting physics used to study photons and wavelengths in real life to perform similar tests in game. This isn't just a game changer for how game developers can light their game. This kind of technology enables all sorts of new and crazy stuff that we've never seen before. Imagine a game that lets you physically simulate a camera obscura as a giant image puzzle. Programming that in without RTX would be a monumental effort that requires advanced tools, techniques, and a lot of trickery. But with RTX, you can just build a simple room and the lighting engine itself enables the rest. Now I've talked about RTX in the past and about how much easier it makes lighting a game. Basically every game we've ever played before RTX looked as good as it did because someone sat there and manually recreated the lighting to be as close to how it would look in real life as possible. Ray tracing lets developers create and place real lights that cast physically simulated light throughout the world. Rather than having to do a bunch of tricks to make a ton of compromises to just have a sun in a game, ray tracing lets a developer just define where the sun is, how bright it is, what color it emits, and boom, the world has a sun with realistic lighting. To us as players, that might not sound like a huge deal. In Minecraft, toggling RTX on and off looks very cool, but as I said at the start, shader mods can replicate most of the look of RTX. The difference is anyone can implement RTX if they have the tools and know-how and get a realistic effect out of it. Sonic Ether is an incredibly talented programmer that has spent years perfecting his shader mod. Meanwhile, Microsoft and Nvidia have added RTX to Minecraft in a matter of months and it's already generations ahead of what Sonic Ether could ever achieve without RTX. And yes, I do know that there is an RTX version of Sonic Ether's mod, but that runs in screen space and is still very limited compared to this official RTX build of the game. Just imagine every game that you play having lighting as good as Minecraft RTX or controls. That's what technology could enable at a superficial level, but on a deeper level, it's a path to a whole new area of game design that I doubt players ever thought would be possible. All right, now while I've spent the bulk of this video lavishing praise on Minecraft RTX, I'm sure you might have noticed a few issues. Firstly, the frame rate is not great. This version of the game is running with DLSS at 1440p. Effectively, it's rendering the game at around 1080p and upscaling it. This gives a huge performance boost, but the game regularly drops to below 60 FPS. Considering it's running on an RTX 2080 with a 144Hz monitor, this is not great compared to traditionally rendered games running at even native 1440p resolution. Secondly, you'll notice that there's quite a bit of artifacting and ghosting. That's primarily a limitation of the beta and should be significantly reduced for the final version of the game. But the reason that this is so apparent is that there's actually a ton of filtering happening to basically smooth out the light reflections created by not having an infinite number of bounces and rather only seven or eight. And much of that filtering is cumulative, meaning it builds the final image using information from previous frames as well. 
Hopefully the developers can improve the sample rate and reduce ghosting by launch. Also, while the Camera Obscura Digital Foundry made works incredibly well, trying to replicate it using the outside world doesn't seem to work yet. I'm not sure if the issue is ray tracing being too low resolution to capture all the detail needed, if it's just not possible due to some technical limitations, or if I just didn't make the room big enough or recreate it in an appropriate way. But it doesn't seem to work fully in the beta yet. I'm sure someone will figure it out though, so I'll be keeping my eyes peeled for that. The final issue and probably the biggest hurdle for players is Minecraft RTX being exclusive to NVIDIA GPUs. And while ray tracing is possible on AMD GPUs, NVIDIA cards have specialized cores that accelerate the process. Without those cores, ray tracing runs considerably slower, if even at all. And considering that the performance isn't great to begin with, it doesn't seem like it would be that likely on other GPUs not optimized for it. Minecraft RTX will be stuck running on NVIDIA hardware until AMD releases their ray tracing accelerated GPUs later this year. NVIDIA are also updating their GPUs this year with improved RTX rendering, so it's likely we'll see a ton of competition between Team Red and Team Green for who can run Minecraft the best. With a Crisis 1 remaster on the way, it's kind of weird to think that instead of saying, but can it run Crisis, we'll probably be asking, but can it run Minecraft RTX? That said, the Crisis remaster features Crytek's proprietary ray tracing tech, and it runs on both AMD and Nvidia hardware, so there's the chance the classic Crisis meme will rise once again. Anyway guys, that's all I have for today about Minecraft RTX. I know ray tracing tech tends to come off as some kind of dumb marketing gimmick, because because until now, we really haven't seen what it truly offers. And even with the camera obscura thing, Minecraft RTX is only scratching the surface of what ray tracing can do. But it's certainly been a while since I've had my mind blown by a new lighting engine, and this certainly did it. This isn't just good lighting, it's real lighting, and that's why it's going to be the future of how we render our game engines. Granted, we're still on the cusp of having enough hardware horsepower to implement these effects in most common day games, but I'd imagine in 10 years time, there won't be that many games not running with ray tracing of some sort. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Let me know if you're checking out the Minecraft RTX beta, and I'll see you next time. This is Levelcap, signing off.